As Matt Fossil's metaphor for the elements and principles of arts linked to cooking, that if we care for a quality dish, one must know how to choose the best ingredients for our recipe, where elements of arts are like the ingredients applied in art making process, and the recipe as the art principles. Along with this video are activities that would allow further understanding of arts in the context of the different cultural icons or assets. So today we're going to talk about line, shape, form, and values. So it's understood that last session or last episode we were talking about the different elements and principles of arts. But today we're going to focus on these four important elements because I think these are interconnected and interrelated to each other. So line is a moving dot and it's either a horizontal line or a vertical line, curve lines or zigzag lines or even diagonal lines. So it doesn't matter for as long as you're using a continuous uh, connected dots that are very important in representational drawing most especially if we actually would use that in represent representing any objects in order to express something or in order to uh, visualize an object. So this is actually using line for a contour drawing or outline drawing. But uh, in drawing, uh, we normally would understand it uh, farther rather than just merely using uh, outline drawing. So when a line is connected or enclosed, so we are no longer dealing with a line. Instead, we are already dealing with shape. So basically line, if we connect them and enclose them, we are forming shapes. So shapes can either be geometric, just like circle, square, and triangle, or can also be organic. So these organic shapes are basically uh, taking inspiration from nature, or these are freeform shapes or uh, natural shapes. So just like the shapes of the of the leaves, of the trees, or of the flowers. So these are freeform shapes or organic shapes. But then again, in representational drawing, we would not want to make use of flat shapes, which are two dimensionals, but we would rather to have a better representation just like forms. So forms, just like shapes, can either be uh, geometric, or organic. But this one is more elaborate because we want it more representational as if we are creating models, either actual, but in drawing we would want to have it as representational or illusion of form. As if you're using lines in order to represent any actual objects, just like a form of a fruit, for example, or a ball. But as, as what I've said, we would want it as close as possible to what is actual. And these cross contour lines that I'm using now are quite far from what really is when we talk about uh, a fruit or a ball. So this one is just like modeling a, a figure of a fruit or a figure of a ball. So what is then are actually needed? for a very close representation of any objects in drawing. And that value comes in. What is value in drawing? When we say value, 
that has to do with the light, that has to do with the dark, and the light sides, or the light portions. So basically, we will be talking about the tints and the shades of the drawing that we are actually illustrating or visually representing. So value deals with tints and shades. But before that, we have to understand how it works in our drawing. So we have to create a value scale that means the different shades we can make out of the scale that we are preparing. So that has 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, six and seven so actually there are seven to consider so since we're using a an application or an app for this so it's impo it's impossible for me to do smudging technique so in this case we are going to use hatching and cross hatching to elaborate the difference of the the tints and the shadows that can be created by changing the angle of our lines from zero I mean from one down to seven so if we're going to create something like this in as our prepar preparation or preparatory phase in drawing then we would understand very clearly that as we make the lines in our drawing or as we create lines in our drawing they appear lighter when they're far from each other but they appear darker when they're close to each other especially if we make use not just cross hatching but also hatching techniques so when we say hatching these are parallel lines that are actually applied to the spaces and cross hatching these are actually overlapping lines from different directions
Please apply to your daily tasks the lessons you learned today for a whole new way of experiencing arts in a contextualized, indigenized, and culture-based way. Goodbye for now, dear students, and see you in the next episode.